Welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, our lesson is on finding cube roots. Our objectives are that you will find cube roots of perfect cubes, you will evaluate expressions involving cube roots, and you will use cube roots to solve equations. Here's what I'd like you thinking about. How are square roots and cube roots different? What is a cube root? A cube root of a number is a value that when multiplied by itself three times is equal to the value under the cube root symbol. So here we have the cube root of eight. We still have our radical like we learned from square roots. This is our radical. This is still our radicand. Eight is still our radicand. But now we have an index. So in a square root, your index is invisible. You could write a two there for square root, but it's best practice not to write that. You will never see the two there, maybe on a calculator to distinguish it. But it's there, it's what it means. But our index here is three, and that means cube root. Here are a few cube root facts. Unlike square roots, cube roots have one root. Cube roots are the inverse of the cube of a value. Here's an example. Two cubed is equal to eight because this represents two times two times two. The cube root of eight is the inverse of cubing two and equal to two. So if two cubed equals eight, then the cube root of eight is equal to two. So think of these operations as cubing and cube root, they are inverse, they undo each other. Cube roots are the factor that when multiplied by itself three times equal the radicand. So two times two times two is equal to eight. Eight is our radicand, our index to our radical. So two times two times two is eight. Two cubed is eight, and the cube root of eight is two. All right, so the cube and cube root relationship, we just talked about cubes and cube roots having that inverse relationship. So here are some perfect cubes. Zero cubed is equal to zero. The cube root of zero is equal to zero. Then we have one cubed is equal to one. The cube root of one is one. Two cubed we reviewed is eight, so the cube root of eight is two. Three cubed is 27. The cube root of 27 is three. Four cubed is 64, and the cube root of 64 is four. So I encourage my students to go ahead and write these in their notebook and probably go up to, oh, 15 or 20, just to have on hand so that when you're doing some, you get to start to get to see what those perfect cube values are. So I don't let you use those on a quiz or a test, but it helps to be able to recognize it and see. Let's talk about negative roots. Unlike square roots, cube roots can have a negative radicand. So the cube root of negative eight could be represented as negative two times negative two times negative two. So as a reminder, when I multiply the first two negative twos together, negative two times negative two is positive four. Multiplied by a third negative two is negative eight. So when we have an odd exponent, or in this case, index, remember we can have a negative value. So the cube root of negative eight is negative two. Let's talk about estimating non-perfect cube roots. We're asked what two consecutive integers does the value lie between? So remember consecutive integers are integers that come one right after the other when you count. One, two, three. So one and two are consecutive. Two and three are consecutive. Three and four are consecutive. One and three are not consecutive. 
So if I have the cube root of 33, I need to identify where that would be. So I'm using my number line to show my perfect cube roots. And I note that the cube root of 33 would fall somewhere in here. So the cube root of 33 lies between 3 and 4. So if you used a calculator to find it, it would be 3 point something. But it's less than 4 and greater than 3 in between the two. Now it's your turn. I would like you to pause the video and find the cube root of 512. Come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back, here's our solution. So the cube root of 512 would be equal to 8 times 8 times 8 to get the 512 to match this radicand. So the cube root is 8. Your turn. I'd like you to find the cube root of negative 1,000. Please pause and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So the radicand negative 1,000 could be represented by negative 10 multiplied by negative 10 multiplied by negative 10. So the cube root of negative 1,000 is negative 10. Your turn. I would like you to simplify the cube root of 8 over 125. Please pause and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So I'm first going to rewrite this to find the cube root of my numerator, then the cube root of my denominator. The cube root of 8 would be 2 times 2 times 2, so equal to 2. The cube root of 125 could be rewritten as 5 times 5 times 5. So the cube root of 8 is 2, the cube root of 125 is 5, giving me a value of two-fifths. Your turn again. What two consecutive integers does this value lie between? Please pause and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So here's using my number line I made with my perfect cubes. And I can tell you that the 103 as the radicand, the cube root of 103 will fall between the cube root of 64 and the cube root of 125, telling me that this cube root lies between the integers 4 and 5. Now let's talk about evaluating expression. Just like with square roots, cube roots fall under PEMDAS under exponent for the e. So we are going to clear the cube root before we do any other operation. So the first thing we want to do is find the cube root of 216, which is 6. 6 times 6 times 6 is 216. Then we want to multiply. 2 times 6 is 12. And then last we subtract, which is negative 1. So remember, order of operations, clear your exponents, and cube roots and square roots fall under exponents. Then multiply or divide from left to right. Then you subtract or add last. Now it's your turn. Simplify this expression. Pause. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So first thing we're going to do is clear the cube root, which is negative 7. Then we need to multiply 4 times negative 7 is negative 28. Last, we add 33 and negative 28 are positive 5. All right, now we're going to learn how to use cube roots to solve an equation. So you often see cube roots applied to volume because volume is a cubic measurement. So this is a cube and the equation or formula to find the volume of a cube is equal to s cubed because all sides in a cube are equivalent length times width times height they're all s the side length so s cubed represents the volume of a cube so we are going to plug in what we know we know the volume is 1331 so i'm going to replace v with 1331 and that's equal to s cubed now, to solve this equation, we're going to use the inverse of cubing something, and we're going to find the cube root of both sides of the equation. Remember, whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other. The cube root of something cubed 
is just that itself, s. And the cube root of 1,331 is 11. So the side length is 11 inches. Your turn. Here's our cube and its volume. Go ahead and solve for the side length. Please pause and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So we're going to start with our volume formula for a cube. I'm going to replace V with our volume, 1,728. We're going to do the inverse of cubing and find the cube root of both sides. And 12 cubed would be 1,728. So that tells me the side length is 12 feet. So there you have it. That's how you find cube roots, evaluate with cube roots, and solve equation using cube roots. We even did a little estimating today. So I thank you for joining me here at The Magic of Math, where we together will master math one video at a time. Have a great day.